Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh and today I will be discussing about Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle or TCA cycle. TCA means tricarboxylic acid cycle. So this thing we have already studied uh, from our school days. Okay. So TCA cycle is nothing but a continuation of oxidation of glucose. Okay. So some part of the glucose will be oxidized, oxidized in case of uh, glycolysis. Okay. So here glycolysis. pyruvate and it forms acetyl coa and it will be tca cycle so that means glycolysis and tca cycle are linked by this reaction that is oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate this is called as link reaction between glycolysis and TCA cycle and when you are talking about uh, TCA cycle okay so glycolysis where it is taking place in it is taking place in cytoplasm and TCA cycle which is taking place in mitochondria why cannot pyruvate directly can enter into mitochondria because mitochondria is having a rigid uh, membrane which will not permit pyruvate to enter okay because TCA cycle is taking place in mitochondria okay to enter Okay, this pyruvate will be taking another route converting into acetyl CoA, and this acetyl CoA can easily permeable by mitochondrial membrane. And this acetyl CoA once enter mitochondria participates in TCA cycle. Not only this is the this cycle continuation of glycolysis, this is also a common pathway for other metabolites like fatty acid metabolism, degradation of fatty acids, and uh, you can take protein metabolism, degradation of proteins. Okay, based on metabolic fate when protein degraded. Okay. They will produce amino acids, and um, when you remove amino group from the amino acids, they are nothing but uh, keto acids, and these keto acids can be easily uh, enter into TCA cycle via forming some other products or intermediates of TCA cycle. So, in in final, what to say? TCA cycle is a common pathway for all the biomolecules like carbohydrates you take, lipids you take, and uh, proteins you take. Okay, so citric acid cycle is a series of reactions in mitochondria that brings about catabolism of acetyl CoA to CO2 in water. So what I told you, you know, as like in previous videos, glucose is a six carbon compound. It forms three carbon pyruvate, and finally two carbon acetyl CoA, and this acetyl CoA eventually removed as CO2 plus water. So that is nothing but oxidation of glucose and meanwhile they will be producing lot of NADH plus FADH and these things will enter into electron transport chain to produce ATP. So this is the sequential mechanism of citric acid cycle. So let us go through the pathway see the reactions one by one. So once this acetyl CoA enters into the mitochondria, you see here this acetyl CoA, it's a two carbon compound. Okay, so oxaloacetate is a four carbon. Okay, so this four carbon and two carbon combines to form six carbon citric acid. Okay, so tricarboxylic. So it is having three carboxylic groups. Citric acid is having three carboxylic groups. That's why it is known as tricarboxylic acid cycle. Okay, and the conversion oxaloacetate and acetyl CoA both combine to form citrate and removing CoA. So this CoA is removed by adding water molecule. Okay, and the enzyme is citrate synthase. Here the compound which is forming citrate. So that's why the enzyme is citrate synthase. So this citrate again undergo modification by the enzyme aconitase. Okay, so this aconitase what it will do? It removes water molecule and forms isocitrate in the previous reaction we have added water molecule and here we are added we are removing water molecule so this citrate converted to isocitrate okay and this reaction mediated by the enzyme aconitase and the third reaction where isocitrate undergo dehydrogenation that means removal of hydrogen from this isocitrate to form alpha ketoglutarate okay here you see here here it requires uh, manganese ions as activator for uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase so 
first NADH here is produced. Okay, and now formed alpha ketoglutarate undergo uh, sequential dearrangements to form succinyl CoA by the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So remember, guys, in our previous video, we have already discussed about oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate, where it is mediated by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Here also, the similar one is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. It is similar to pyruvate dehydrogenase as the requirements of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Similar requirements is also for alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. It is also multi enzyme complex and it is also required 5 coenzymes for its activities such as TPP, FAD, NAD, uh, CoA, and uh, lipoic acid. Okay, you see here, here this reaction sequential remover of hydrogens at the same time 2 carbon dioxide will be removed. 2 carbon dioxide will be removed here. Okay. And in case of isocitrate dehydrogenase also, two carbon dioxides will be removed. So total in oxidative decarboxylation, two carbons will be removed. Here from uh, isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate, two carbons will be removed. Again, alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA, again two carbons will be removed. So total six carbons, the carbons which are coming from the glucose has been sequentially removed. So now the oxidation of glucose has been complete. So still the reaction has to go forward until it regenerates the auxiliary state. So here you see here coenzyme A has been added and NAD is converted to NADH2. So one more NADH2 we are ge uh, getting. Okay, that uh, one more NADH. Okay, and this reaction, I'll overall uh, completing the reaction, I'll be telling you what are all the inhibitors are there. Okay, once this succinyl CoA is formed, the succinyl CoA by removing the CoA, it will be converted into succinate by the enzyme succinate thiokinase. Succinate thiokinase removes the coenzyme A from succinyl CoA and forms succinate. And here, one GTP will be generated. Okay, one GTP will be generated, and it is a magnesium dependent uh, enzyme. Magnesium dependent enzyme. Okay, so here, one GTP has been uh, generated. And again, this succinate converted to fumarate with the help of the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase where FAD converted to FADH2. Okay, again this fumarate converted to malate. Okay, so by the enzyme uh, fumarase by removing water molecule. Okay, and malate will be converted to oxaloacetate by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase by generating NADH2. So total here, how many NADH2 has generated? 1, 2, uh, uh, 3. Okay, 3 NADH2. That means Two acetyl CoA are entering into the TCA cycle. Okay, so that means all are two to two. So that means six NADH2 are producing actually. Okay, and two GTPs are producing, and two FADH2s are producing. So as per the new calculation only we'll go. So six into six into two point five. That means fifteen ATPs. And uh, two FADs means three ATPs. Two into one point five. Okay, that means three ATPs and two GTPs. They are like it gives you twenty ATPs. So the calculation will be varying. Okay, by entering one acetyl CoA, you will be getting ten ATPs and oxidation of glucose will be giving you 20 ATPs. Remember, 2 acetyl CoA means 20 ATPs, 10, uh, 1 acetyl CoA means 10 ATPs. Okay, at the end, you see here, there will be gener regeneration of oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is a starting substrate of TC cycle which is consumed at the same time, this is a substrate which will be regenerated at the end of the cycle. That's why Krebs cycle is now a cycle. Okay, because oxaloacetate is a starting substance, again, oxaloacetate is the end substance. So, it is like cycle. And the inhibitors here itself, I can show you here fluoroestate, okay, which inhibits aconitase enzyme, and arsenite, which inhibits alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So, these are the two uh, inorganic ions which inhibit TCA cycle at aconitase uh, level, and another one is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase level. So, energetics just now we have discussed. So, total 10 ATP is generated from one molecule of ATP. So, in competitive exams, they will twist the questions, and in uh, theory exams also, they will twist the question. One molecule of 
glucose undergoing oxidation of tca cycle it will produce as 20 atps okay one ester coa will produce as 10 atps so significance if you are talking about uh, significance it provides energy so with the help of uh, glycolysis we are getting only small amount of atps okay that means 7 atps uh, based on availability of oxygen 7 or 4 or 2 i mean 7 or 2 okay and again here the final it is a final co uh, common pathway for carbs lipids and proteins and amphibolic that means dual function catabolic and here what is you mean by amphibolic it has got dual one is synthetic reactions other one is catabolic reactions catabolic reactions is sequential removal of carbon from the glucose okay that is and, and uh, synthetic reactions means oxaloacetate can be converted to aspartic acid that means uh, amino acid okay and at the same time uh, alpha ketoglutarate can be converted to glutamic acid that is another enzyme okay they are like synthetic reactions so that means TCA cycle as having two roles one is catabolic role other one is anabolic role okay that's why it is known as amphibolic TCA cycle is amphibolic in nature okay so pathways that are originated that means gluconeogenesis how okay so oxaloestate is a starting substrate okay oxaloestate is a starting substrate of this is cycle and this is also responsible in making of glucose okay that we will discuss in detail in the next pathway gluconeogenesis transamination i said oxaloestate can be converted to aspartate and uh, alpha ketoglutarate can be converted to glutamate and fatty acid synthesis acetyl coa will be diverted to make fatty acid synthesis heme synthesis succinyl coa okay succinyl coa required along with the glycine to carry forward in making of heme okay so these are all the significances of citric acid cycle so just now i'll be showing in the picture amphibolic role of tca cycle so how it will be possible so how non-essential amino acids will be synthesized that's what oxaloestate can be converted to aspartate non-essential amino acid fatty acids and steroid synthesis citrate also you require and alpha ketoglutarate you see non-essential amino acid again and succinyl coa in synthesis of heme so this is called amphibolic role of citric acid cycle so reg uh, regulation of uh, tc cycle at the level of citrate synthase isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase okay and activities of these enzymes are dependent on energy status that means atp will be the strong inhibitor of this citric acid cycle amp camp will be the strong activators of citric acid cycle so excess atp nadh and succinyl coa which signals high energy status of the cell and they inhibit these enzymes and high levels of adp that means decreased level uh, energy in the body so they all activate the enzymes of the cell you see here in the picture you can make out atp nadh will be inhibitors adp pyruvate will be the promoters okay again isocitrate dehydrogen is also like this alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogen also same way okay and here nadh is also indicating the high energy level status okay it is also acting as an inhibitor okay know the difference nad and nadh nadh increase in, it is a status of high energy level nad is a low energy level okay so that's all about uh, citric acid cycle thanks for watching thank you